friends, hello everyone, welcome back to another bootstrap tutorial. So in the previous tutorial, we talked about containers and grids. In this tutorial, we'll be talking about typography. Now typography is basically text. We can make text look a specific way depending on how or on what classes we give it. For example, let's maybe remove all of this. And let's create a p tag that says hello world. We can create an h1 tag that says the same. There we go. So now I have a p tag that says hello world and an h1 that says hello world. Now, when we use bootstrap, usually we don't really say h1, h2, h3, or we do, but we only say it for a specific header. For other things that should be the same size, but should not be the same priority as an H1 or an H2 or an H3 or whatnot, for those that just need that size and same properties, we can use a P tag. The idea behind it is that we don't overuse H1 tags and H2 tags. We only use them where they are needed. Otherwise, we can use styling for them instead. So let's go here to our P tag and say class H1. Now, both of these look exactly the same. However, this one is a P tag, meaning to the computer's eye, it will look like a piece of text, just a paragraph. Whilst to our eyes, it would look like a header. So we already have a main header for the web page. But we want another header of the same size, but it's not a header header. Then we can use this. And of course, you have your H2 and your H3 all the way down to H6. And that's just for the header. Now, sometimes you need something that stands out more than a normal heading. Like this H1, it doesn't really stand out that much. Compared to normal P tags, it does. But in general, not really. But something else you could use to make it stand out more is giving a P tag or an H1 tag or whatever you would like to give this um, class to the class of display and then the size where one is of course the largest and six would be the smallest. So now it's pretty big compared to a normal H1. And then just to give a size comparison, if we put a normal hello world here. So there we go. So this is the biggest size that basically bootstrap gives you out of the box compared to the generally smallest. And this of course goes to H2, H3, H4, all the way down to H6. You also have a class for small text. So now text will look extra small, a little bit smaller than a normal P tag. It's basically a stand in for the small tag. So you can rather use a class with small. So instead of having to use a small tag inside of a P tag, you can just use a span, take this span, go here. Now you take this class and you move it to this span instead. And now this world will be a tiny bit smaller. Let's just go like H1 or something. Tiny bit smaller. And yeah, that's the benefit of instead of using an actual small tag, you can just use a class. A lot of times people will just throw out all types of elements and just use a class, but it's still good to use an element in some cases. But if you do want to, and you just want the styling, you don't care about the element, then this is a great way to go. You also have for mark. So something to replace the mark tag, which basically highlights it. It's very difficult to see, but it's a very light yellowish color. You'll probably be able to see it better if I go here and say style background color. And it just make it like a dark color. There we go. So now you can see it a bit better. You also have a special tag for block quotes. So let me just add some lorem here. Now here we can go and say class is equal to block quote. And now it will have some special styling because it's a block quote. 
you also have a block quote footer. So if we go, go here and say lorem and just remove most of the lorem for like, if this is like the person who said it, then here we can say class block quote and footer. And this will have a little special styling for it as well, because it's the footer of a block quote. Cool. Now I'm going to speed through some of these because there's quite a lot. So I'm just going to maybe keep the lorem and remove everything else. We also have a lead lead to make a paragraph stand out a tiny bit more. And I'm also going to have another paragraph just for um, example sake. Okay, so the normal paragraph and this is the lead. You also have a text end to specify that the text should align to the end instead of the beginning. You also have the opposite of text start and this will send or it will basically do what it usually does. does. But in some languages, they start reading from right to left and not left to right. So you might want to use this and I think it's aerobic. You also have no wrap, which will remove wrapping. So now we can just go like that. And as you can see, it doesn't wrap anymore. It's just one long piece of text. You also have lowercase. So now there's no more uppercase letters. Everything is lowercase. You also have uppercase. Now everything's uppercase. If I were to make that L a lowercase L, then I can go capitalize. And now it has a capital L. Everything actually has a capital letter now. Not just the first one, every way. Bootstrap also have some special styling for specific elements. For example, let's start here. Let's create this P tag. We can remove this class. And now if we were to go here and just comment out this bootstrap like that, then now if we go down here and say ABBR, for abbreviation, then now we'll have this little thing here, which if we hover over it, it just gives us a bunch of dollars. It doesn't really look that good. But when we bring in bootstrap, then now when we hover over it, it has a little question mark and then it displays it. So it gives a little bit of extra styling there. So you don't necessarily need to add a class. Bootstrap has a tons of, has tons of these, but I'm not going to go through every one of them. But let's do one more before we go. So here we also have the KBD for the keyboard command. And now you can put things in here like a keyboard, for example, CTRL plus C and that means copy. And if we do that, normally it looks pretty trash. You can't really tell it's anything different. It looks a tiny bit different, but it's pretty trash. But with Bootstrap, it has really great styling, and I do love that. Bootstrap has tons of these already built in. Usually, you don't have to worry too much about learning these. You'll kind of find them along the way as you use them. For example, if you use the keyboard command, even if I didn't tell you here, once you use Bootstrap, you'll be like, wow, that's actually pretty good looking. But yeah, that's the basics of typography in Bootstrap. We covered how to make your text look different using classes or just create H1 tags using P tags, and you don't have to write even a single line of CSS. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all again in the next Bootstrap tutorial.